Did you know that we are at war? At war with rapidly mutating and merciless predators. And if these predators claim victory in this epic battle, it will lead to the demise of humanity. They are worse than the flesh-eating, rancid, blood-sucking, rotted zombies. These insidious vultures are easily transmissible between each one of us. No bite required. And when we least expect it, they thrive upon us from the inside out. The battle we are facing is with antibiotic resistant bacteria. And we as a society are failing miserably at stopping it. A recent report conducted by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in 2018 revealed that over the next 30 years, deaths due to antibiotic resistant infections will far exceed 90,000 in the UK, 1.3 million in Europe, and 10 million worldwide unless we take action right now. To understand the current state of this war, we must go back centuries to truly appreciate bacteria. As philosopher Sun Tzu stated, to know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. Like us, bacteria are living creatures, but they have been in existence for over 3.5 billion years. So they have learned over this time to develop defense mechanisms against our key weapon, antibiotics. Every time we use an antibiotic to kill bacteria, the resistant bacteria, which are strong enough to withstand antibiotics, survive and propagate. These resistant bacteria are now able to transfer their resistant genes to susceptible bacteria and multiply even further. Currently, bacteria are looking and acting stronger than us. But in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. It is up to us. Do we want to win or lose in this war with antibiotic resistant bacteria? Do we want to know how we could win in this battle? Yes. Yes. Good, let us fight with infection prevention. First, as we will be fighting in this battle together, let us get to know each other. First, turn to your right and verbally greet your neighbor. <laughs> now, what if I told you that there's only a one in five chance that your friendly mate washed his or her hands after using the loo. <laughs> Given this information, would you like to shake your neighbor's hands now? <laughs> in a UK-wide study conducted in 2012 by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, 99% of people interviewed at a loo station claimed that they had washed their hands after using the bathroom. However, electronic recording devices revealed that only 32% of men and 64% of women actually did. And of those that did, many washed their hands incorrectly. Now, a lot has been said about the key questions to ask during a first date. <laughs> Many men and women have even identified their own individual one key question. 
As a doctor in infectious disease research with over 10 years infectious disease experience and over 30 research publications, there is clearly only one question worth asking. The make it or break it moment of any meaningful date. Did you really thoroughly wash your hands after using the loo? <laughs> the World Health Organization recommends on following these steps. First, wet your hands with warm water and apply enough soap to cover all hand surfaces. Second, rub your hands palm to palm vigorously with foam soap while deeply breathing in and out five times. This serves as a 20 second timer. Lastly, after rinsing off the soap with warm water, dry your hands thoroughly with a paper towel, using that paper towel to turn off the faucet. Optimal hand drying is just as important as hand washing. Two studies conducted by the Department of Medicine in New Zealand revealed a direct correlation between the amount of residual water left on our hands and the transmission of bacteria. That's right, a direct correlation. We will typically have three hand drying options when we enter into that public restroom. Paper towels, jet air dryers, and warm air dryers. In 2015, a study conducted by the University of Westminster found that jet and warm air dryers spread up to 1,300 times more bacteria and viruses from and onto our hands than paper towels because air movement encourages the dispersal of these pathogens. Think of it this way. Using a hand dryer is like setting off a bacterial and viral bomb in the bathroom. <laughs> Every single wave of hot air that touches our hands in the loo multiplies bacteria again and again and yet again. The solution? Dry your hands using a paper towel after using the loo. Carry a paper towel with you at all times. <laughs> you never know when it may come in handy. Next, raise your hands if you took the tube or the bus today or this week. In 2017, researchers from the London Metropolitan University found over 100 different kinds of bacteria and mold strains on tubes and buses in London. Most worrisome, nine of the 12 bacteria from the World Health Organization's list of drug-resistant bacteria that pose the greatest threat to society existed on the tubes, with the Victoria, Piccadilly, and the circle lines being the worst offenders. <laughs> Rest assured, the Barbican station is free. <laughs> now, when I enter into a tube or bus, I wonder how many people have coughed or sneezed onto their hands prior to clasping onto that handrail. 80% of infectious diseases is spread by touch. 80%. I learned from my own experience that not using that handrail is harder than it seems. <laughs> so a practical solution is to use a hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% ethyl alcohol when exiting that tube or bus. Make sure that your hands are completely wet with that hand sanitizer and that it takes at least 15 to 20 seconds for your hands to dry. I get it. You're thinking, she's asked me to wash my hands while deeply breathing in and out five times like I'm in a therapy session, carry a paper towel with me at all times, and now carry hand sanitizer? My gosh! 
Remember, we are at war. We must stay prepared. When you enter that tube or bus, do not think about that seat. Think about not getting sick. Think about hand sanitizer. Humans have been predicting the end of the world for centuries. It is inevitable that microbes will evolve resistance to antibiotics. But we can slow that process by preventing infections and transmission. Using one of philosopher Sun Tzu's essentials for victory, he will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. The first fight takes place in the loo. The second fight takes place every time we take public transportation. And the third fight takes place when we are feeling the most vulnerable, when we are on the verge of falling in love. Ask the right question from the get-go. <laughs> if we take action now, we can claim victory in this epic war with antibiotic-resistant bacteria and thrive in the years and centuries to come. Thank you.